Hey YouTube, it's Justin, um, answering your questions from joincfe.com slash knock. Thanks for asking your questions there. Upvote the ones that you wanna see more of. Um, and if I did give a response already, definitely upvote those or give comments on the actual post for them. That way um, we can know if we wanna expand or, or just talk more about those given questions. Today's question comes from Stuart. Stuart Roberts was asking, essentially, how is it that some services that do web hosting, how is it that some of them um, do cover all sorts of languages and some of them don't? Why do they do that and which ones do I recommend? That's essentially what he asked. And the first of all, the reason most web hosts don't cover every language is because it's very challenging to do so. It's similar to like, why is it that every website doesn't have every translation uh, in different language? So like if it's English and Japanese, why aren't they all like that? Why don't they have every single language? Well, it's a very challenging thing to do for the hosting company. Now the hosts themselves, it's a little bit easier than translating spoken languages to translating programming languages, but it's still a challenge. Like there's still a lot of things that go into that. So when you're picking your host, you should be picking it based off of the software stack, you know, the, the different software that you, you need or your project requires and make a choice based off of that. Don't make a choice based off of how much it costs necessarily, which I'll get into that in a second, but make a choice based off of the software that you're using. Right, that's, that's the important part. Now, the fact that it is or it can be so complicated to have all these different languages, that means that, there's, that not every service is going to execute them very, very well. I mean, they might execute them well, but they're not necessarily gonna execute them superbly well. Now, a few of the services that I currently work with are Amazon Web Services, Elastic Beanstalk in particular, for Django. I use a lot of their other web services as well, but that one in particular for, for launch on Django, which we have tutorials covering that. Heroku, which we also have tutorials covering. Um, that's another one that I use a lot, heroku.com. And then the last one is webfaction.com. So each one of those is, I mean, fairly, uh, they're fairly good as far as the pricing is concerned, right? Webfaction is probably the best entry level one. We actually work with them, they're an affiliate of ours, so full, full disclosure there. Um, I would check them out because it's about $10 a month. With our deal, it's a little bit less than that. I think it's half that price actually for six months. Um, and what you would do with them is they already have a lot of this stuff set up for you and you just kind of work into their system. Heroku is one step further. It's a little bit more challenging to initially set up, um, but after you initially set it up, then it's pretty easy to continue to work with it. And then Amazon Web Services Elastic Beanstalk is just one step further as far as challenging to set up, but also very good to, to work with once you get there. Um, so each one of these services is really good. Web Faction, I've, I've found that their support, directly talking to their support staff is actually really good too. They do help a lot with diagnosing problems. Um, and then, then going up the ladder, those will as well, but like just not in my experience, I've, I've just had more with Web Faction. That's why I recommend them, and that's why they're an affiliate of mine. Um, a couple others that I don't really use that much anymore, but I, I've heard do really well um, are Linode, that's linode.com, and as well as uh, Rackspace. Those two I've heard are very good for um, all sorts of things when it comes to hosting your service. Now, if you wanna know more about hosting, let us know in the comments, uh, but hopefully that answers your question as far as where to host. And the reason the pricing is different, of course, is, is it has to do with their business model itself. Some of them, you end up sp spending more because you get uh, uh, basically better service for your server. But if you're starting out, a lot of times you don't necessarily need that, right? So like when I started uh, coding for entrepreneurs, we I put it on WebFaction because WebFaction was great, but it was a shared server. And you know, as we started getting more traction and, and more traffic, we moved over to Heroku. Heroku now holds our, our, our codingforentrepreneurs.com um, because it handles our service on a, on a higher level. That doesn't mean that Web Faction wouldn't have necessarily been able to, but Heroku just allows us to do it on a, a faster and easier way. And then also Heroku is on Amazon Web Services uh, backend. So like there's some peace of mind there with using something as big as Amazon the same thing that Netflix uses for all of their stuff. So we figured that might be a good thing for us. So thanks for the question. Um, again, we're asking them or answering them from joincfe.com slash knock. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.